We can classify substances based on their properties, how they react, what they do, what we use them for. For instance, fuels are chemicals that we burn to provide heat, which can be used for warmth or turned into other forms of energy, like kinetic or electrical energy. These other classes of chemicals here have their own properties and uses as well. Two very common and important classes of substances, though, that we encounter a lot in ordinary life, and which we're going to look at here, are acids and bases. Acids and bases have some properties that you may already be familiar with. Acids taste sour. In fact, the word acid comes from the Latin word for sour. Think of lemon juice and vinegar and plain yogurt, which has acids in it that are caused when bacteria ferment the milk. In contrast, bases taste bitter. Acids turn litmus paper red, whereas bases turn it blue. Litmus is a natural dye that's derived from a lichen, and it acts as an acid-base indicator. Other indicators will also show a colour change between acids and bases. Acids and bases neutralise each other. In general, if you add an acid to a base, then the result, the products, will be neither acidic nor basic. There are exceptions to this that we'll look at in Year 12 when we talk in more depth about acids and the idea of chemical equilibrium. Both acids and bases can be corrosive if they're concentrated enough, but the chemical reactions that they undergo that do the corroding are actually different. We're going to look at some of the characteristic reactions of acids later. So what is an acid and what is a base? It was first recognised in the 18th century that there existed a group of chemicals that had related properties, including the fact that they tasted sour, and so they became known as acids. At the time, though, chemists didn't know what the formulae of these acids were, and there was a great deal of discussion and argument relating to what was responsible for them all being acidic. The first generally accepted definition for acids and bases came from Svent Arrhenius, a Swedish chemist. In 1890, he defined an acid as a substance delivering hydrogen cations to the solution, and a base as a substance that delivered hydroxide anions to the solution. This is the same as saying that when you dissolve an acid in water, it increases the concentration of hydrogen ions in the water, whereas if you dissolve a base in water, it'll increase the concentration of hydroxide ions. We can explore this definition by looking at what happens to some acids and bases when we put them in water. Let's take nitric acid. A nitric acid molecule is covalently bonded, but when it dissolves in water, it behaves almost as if it were ionic. It separates, we say dissociates, into a hydrogen ion and a nitrate ion. So putting nitric acid molecules into water does increase the concentration of hydrogen ions in that water. A similar thing happens for sulfuric acid, but here each molecule has the potential to release two hydrogen ions. In contrast, a base is something like sodium hydroxide. This really is an ionic substance. It's made of a metal ion and a non-metal ion. And when it dissolves in water, it releases a sodium ion and a hydroxide ion. So dissolving this compound in water does increase the concentration of hydroxide ions in water. And similarly for magnesium hydroxide, which releases two hydroxide ions. However, Arrhenius' definition runs into problems when you probe a bit more deeply. Because what about ammonia? Ammonia has the formula NH3, and if you play around with it, you find that it has the properties of a base. But how does it increase the concentration of hydroxide in water? It has no hydroxide ions in it. So Arrhenius' definition was clearly incomplete, and it needed some further work. Before we go on to show how this problem was solved, let me give you a few extra bits of information. Firstly, a hydrogen ion is commonly referred to as a proton. This is because it is literally a proton. Remember that a hydrogen atom consists of one proton and one electron. So when it becomes an ion, it loses the electron, and so an H plus ion is actually a naked proton. This name also leads to the classification of acids as monoprotic, diprotic, or triprotic. All this means is, when the acid dissolves in water, what is the maximum number of hydrogen ions that can dissociate from one molecule? For instance, nitric acid and hydrochloric acid are both monoprotic, because when they dissociate, they release one proton, or one hydrogen ion, per molecule. 
sulfuric acid is a diprotic acid and phosphoric acid is a triprotic acid. It, has, it releases three hydrogen ions. Secondly, naked protons do not tend to hang around for long. When they're produced in water by an acid molecule dissociating, they will quickly join up with a water molecule to make this ion, which is called the hydronium ion. So, it's important to remember that although we often talk about acids as producing hydrogen ions or protons, in reality these protons would almost instantly be converted into hydronium ions. However, we generally use these two names, hydrogen, well three names, hydrogen ions, protons and hydroniums, interchangeably when we're talking about acids and their effects in water. So, back to our dilemma. Arrhenius's definition that a base is something that produces hydroxide ions in water doesn't seem to work for ammonia. In 1923, the Danish chemist Johannes Bronsted and the English chemist Thomas Lowry independently came up with new definitions for acids and bases, and their definitions are more closely tied to how acids and bases react. They said, when an acid reacts, it loses a hydrogen ion that is taken up by something else. We could say that acids are proton donors, although you have to remember that they're not doing it because they want to donate. It's just a chemical reaction. Bases, on the other hand, are substances that accept a hydrogen ion and bond to it. So let's have a look at acids and bases again through this new perspective. When nitric acid dissolves in water, it does dissociate into a hydrogen ion and a nitrate ion. But we can rewrite that to include our knowledge that the hydrogen ion is snapped up by a water molecule. So now you can see that the nitric acid is donating a hydrogen ion to the water. That is, it's losing a hydrogen ion itself. Now let's look at ammonia. When ammonia is dissolved in water, it doesn't remain as ammonia molecules. In fact, it reacts with the water to produce ammonium hydroxide. So have a look at what happens. You can see that the ammonia accepts a hydrogen ion, a proton, from the water to become ammonium. This now leaves the water minus one of its hydrogens and so it becomes hydroxide. So here is the reason why ammonia had the properties of a base without having any hydroxide ions of its own. Because it behaves according to Bronsted and Lowry's definition as a proton acceptor, it takes a proton from water which leaves hydroxide ions left over and so the solution is basic.